Hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss about Azure Data Share. Now, Azure Data Share is one of uh, the options that we have uh, to share the data to any external user. Uh, uh, internally, we can share the data uh, using various access mechanism. For example, in SQL Server, we can grant revoke uh, different level of uh, access to different uh, users. Similarly, if we go to the Azure Data Lake, we would be able to uh, provide the access to a folder level or in container level for the internal user. But when it comes to a business user, uh, you know, it, it becomes a tricky situation. One option is that like, you know, we add the business user as a uh, guest user in our Azure Active Directory and then provide access to the uh, to the user. But uh, that is not all the time, you know, possible. You know, people don't allow any external user, external user to be added as a guest user uh, in our own tenant. So hence there is a need uh, of sharing uh, the data you know externally and one of the option is Azure data share and you know we are going to discuss about uh, the Azure data share into detail the data set that we have uh, if we go to the Azure portal and if we go to the uh, resource list we would be able to create the data set now what we what I already have uh, just before this uh, demo I created a resource group and in that resource group I have basically created a couple of storage account and then uh, Azure data share now, Azure Data Share is a service in uh, Azure, which is basically meant for sharing the data from one source to one destination. Uh, it can be from blob storage to ADLS Gen 2. It can be from SQL Server to ADLS Gen, Gen 2. Different ways we can share the data. Uh, probably I'll just quickly get into the documentation. Uh, yes. Now, if I just look into the, the block diagram, as we can see, the data provider. Now, th this is basically an active user in active subscription who has a storage account or any other sources. And then we basically have a target st store, which is a data consumer. Again, the prerequisite is that data consumer needs to have one subscription. And then what is happening, we basically have two options of sharing the data. One is snapshot based. That means you know, we have one storage account, one snapshot is taken, and then that snap, snap, snapshot is being transferred to the destination account or destination storage account. And then we basically have the in-place access. Now this in-place access that we have, what happens here that you know we would be able to see the real time data snapshot is not uh, you know is not a required thing there so there will not be any kind of delay it is only possible today for the azure data explorer other than the azure data explorer snapshot based sharing is the sharing method that you know azure data share follow so we are going to look into more in this snapshot based sharing method now if we go to this documentation uh, before the resource creation step let me show you this documentation here you know it is basically telling us for which data sources, what are the different, uh, you know, different mode of sharing available, like in-place sharing or snapshot-based sharing. And then this is a matrix which is given, and I, I find I, I found it very useful, where source is there and the destination is there. For which for which sources, what kind of destination is allowed? So that kind of you know matrix is given here, which is very useful. Let me get into the next one and how we basically go ahead and you know create the resource, right? So for that, what we need to do, like, you know, there are some prerequisite, mainly you need to have access to the storage account from where you would like to share the data and you need to have an active Azure subscription. I believe you would be having that. So now if we just get into here, like what we would be able to see, we'd be able to see, uh, you know, uh, the data set account. And from here, like, you know, we can just run our demo. So let me just get into the, the source data set. I basically using two account, one personal account and another one is my cough account. So this is my source data set. From this data set, I would like to invite my company email address, and I would like to send data from this subscription to an another subscription, right? So now, what I do, I just get into this data set, and I, I need to create one data set. So let's say demo data set. And obviously, we are, uh, you know, taking the data from ADLS Gen 2 and sending to a blob storage. So we need to follow the snapshot-based one, and then we'll, we'll go ahead with the continue. And and then we need to give, like, you know, what data set we'd like to share, right? And as I was telling, like, you know, here I would like to share one ADLS Gen 2 file to our Azure blob storage in the destination site. So in the source, I give the ADLS Gen 2, and then I give data share. And then I just provide the story. It will be it will automatically pick up uh, the details. And then I'll quickly go to next. I basically kept some sample file. I can share the data from container level. Also, I can get into the individual file level, right? 
what I'm just going to do, I'll get into the individual file level. I think that that would be more interesting to see. The files. And then I'll just select this one. I click on next, add data set. So now the data set is being added, right? The next thing is what we need to do. We need to basically provide the recipient. So now I'm just going to provide one of my another email address here. So now, um, you know, I can I can just provide any expiration uh, expiration date, but I, for now I'll just keep that. Now, what what is going to happen? Like you know, once I basically give continue, and I can just leave it because I'm going to uh, do it in an ad hoc manner right now. I'll just do create. That's it, right? And what would happen from this Azure data set? One invitation link would be coming to my email box, right? And I just need to follow the steps which is there. So let me get into my email and find my find the details. It took a little bit longer, but here we are. So now if you see, this is how we would be getting the invitation, right? So now we just click the invitation and un unfortunately it got clicked here in a different window I need to click. So I'll just copy the link and I'll get into my different browser. And here in a different window, I'll just click that link. Now, what would happen that you know it will directly take me to the data set account that we have, right? Uh, and then it would be asking me to, uh, you know, accept the invitation. Remember, like this is in the recipient end. So this is my recipient email ID. So let's look into what is happening in the source. So now, if I just get into the source now, and I go to the demo data set one, I would be able to see the invitation would be in the pending state. Uh, why is it so? Uh, because I'm, you know, the recipient have not accepted the, accepted the invite yet, right? So we'll go to the recipient. Now this is the invitation that I have. Now I'll just click the invitation. Now this is the important step. Like when I click, when, once I click the invitation, I need to fill a few details, like where I need to, where, where I would be accepting that invitation. So that is going to be again in one more data set account in the recipient end. So let me just select the resource, and I have already created one. So RG recipient data share, and then I'll just add this, and I'll just you know keep the same name, accept and configure. Now once I do that, let me just go back to the source system, and then see how does it look. So it's gone, right? So that means you know it it has been accepted by the recipient. Now there are a couple of steps that we need to do, right? So till now what we did, we basically created the source, we created the data set at the source system, we have sent the invitation. At the target side, recipient side, I have accepted the invite. Now I need to map my source data set into the target system, right? Where I would like to store that snapshot file or the files that are coming uh, through that invitation. So, you know, then we just need to click the receipt share. And then, you know, when we configure the data set, I can just quickly click on this file. And then I can just put a map to target. So, right now, I'm going to choose Azure Blob Storage. ADLS Gen 2 was my source, right? So as you can as we can see, you know, it was able to understand that ADLS Gen 2 was the source. Hence, only these two options, are, you know, it is showing. And then I'll just select the subscription, and then I'm just going to select any of my storage account. I think this is good. I will just give uh, demo data shared recipients recipient site that is there. I'll just do map to target. Okay, so now you know what is happening. The linkage is being created between the source and target. Okay, now it is showing mapped. The next thing that we, we can do, uh, you know, if it is already scheduled, if the snapshot is already scheduled, then you know, in that particular in interval, the data from the source site is going to come to my destination site. But right now, we are just going to do it in an ad hoc manner. So I'm just going to do this full copy right now. So the moment I create in the full copy, remember I'm just doing it from the recipient end, right? What would happen? The data would be brought into my, uh, you know, recipient storage account. So let me just go to that storage account. I'll go to the container. I could see that you know this demo data say recipient has arrived, and inside that Spark in out, input output file dot csv has come from the source end. So you know in this way, you know we would be able to manage it. We we really need to understand the pricing of it, right? Now how does it, uh, uh, you know incur the cost. So basically the storage price would be there in the recipient end and at the source end who is basically sending the data, the data would be, uh, you know, that this data share 
basically cost us uh, in 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 two ways uh, the number of snapshot that we are taking so it would be having a price and then you know the time that is being taken to transfer that snapshot so snapshot execution is 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 one of the thing that we have right so you know we can uh, see like you know how much uh, the price you know what is the price like per v code per hour right and if we if we go to the source system uh, so for me this was the source now if i go to the source data share quickly i'll go to the source data share and if we go to the send share and then you know we would be able to see for each snapshot how much v code was consumed and how much you know so if i just click on the history and if we click any of the run and then you know we would be able to see it so let's have a look so it took 42 seconds remember it was being charged on the basis of v core hour so it is going to be very minimal for this particular case and then if we click on the succeed we would be able to see the v core was used like two and the time that was taken is like 42 seconds so you know it would be multiplied and then the total cost would be coming i think that's all for the demo uh, thanks uh, for watching